Hello, welcome to Tile Coach. I'm Isaac Ostrom. Today I'm going to be putting liquid backer board down onto this shower floor in preparation for a foam shower pan. So make sure you stay tuned for those videos because I'm going to be doing this whole shower using a preformed foam tray, RSS backer board, niche, everything. This is going to be a trick shower, so stay tuned. But today, yeah, we're putting down liquid backer board. If you haven't heard of it, that sounds kind of funny, right? It's backer board that is liquid. So the nice thing about it is it's self-leveling. It has fibers in it, so you don't have to use lath or chicken wire or any kind of metal reinforcement. You can just prime the floor and dump it right on and it's good to go. So that's what we're gonna do today. I got one bag. Uh, you see here the shower area is about uh, 5 sixteenths out of level on this corner right here. So I have this corner is low at 5 sixteenths. This corner is low at an eighth, quarter right here, eighth right here, and the high point is zero right in this back corner. So what I did is I, I just have these shims, these plastic shims, and I started at my, found my high point and then stacked up shims. That way I know how much material is gonna need to be spread out and then I kind of average it. So one of these bags does 32 square feet at a quarter inch. This is about 22 square feet. So I should have more than enough to fill the voids that I need, but you need to calculate that first to make sure you have enough material to spread. But one bag, this is a pretty big shower pan. Typical three by five, you should never need more than one bag unless it's way out of level. If it's more, if it's like a half inch out of level in some spots, you might need to go to two bags or a bag and a half. But for this application, only one bag should, should work. So what I did is I put my shims down and I marked the floor. You can see over here where I marked, I just took a, a Sharpie, wrote 5 sixteenths here. I have zero right there. And then quarter, eighth, eighth, and so on. So I have the floor marked so I know, I know about the correct depth. Uh, one thing you could do if you want to calculate it, you can sink a screw down, like if this is 5 sixteenths, just put a screw under the floor and leave it up 5 sixteenths and you know that's the level that the liquid backer board has to hit. But once you pour it out, it's supposed to self-level, but you do need to help it out. So a couple tools that I like to have when I'm doing this is just a flat trowel to help move the material around. And this is called a spiked roller. What this does is it helps, it helps the material find its level. You just roll it into the material and it kind of helps it spread out uh, because uh, you can't just dump self-leveler right onto a floor, especially this liquid backer board. In my experience, it takes a little more manipulating to find its level. So keep that in mind. I used some fast dry caulking and I just filled in any of the gaps in the plywood, any holes, because you don't want it to pour down into a crack. So I just took uh, caulking, hit the perimeter, and that's dried up, set up nice. And then after that, I put a primer. You have to put a primer down, and that was undiluted. Just put the primer down, undiluted, spread that all around, uh, let it dry. We did some other stuff. You see here we put in our nailer for the transition between the drywall and the wall board. This is just a two by four turned on its side. And what this does is accomplishes a couple things. It, also, it gives a, a solid backing for the drywall to screw into and the wall board. And then it's also gonna be a place for the shower door to anchor into. So we did that on both sides. Uh, that's an important step you need to do. We got all of our plumbing in. We got our, our Delta R22000 in. It's got an integrated diverter. We did all this with PEX. We switched it over from copper to PEX here with the PEX adapters. And then once you do that, it's real easy. This is just expandable PEX. If you haven't seen how I've done that, I'll put a link to a video showing how I do this. Uh, that way you can run your pipe pretty easily without soldering in the wall. So yeah, so I think we're about ready to go. I will, uh, got my water measured out. Uh, with this product, you need six quarts of water, no more, no less. Be careful, make sure you measure six quarts, make it exact. If you don't put enough water in it, it's not gonna find its level. If you put too much water, it's gonna make it weak. So six quarts, I got that measured out in the bucket. Oh, did I talk about the spray foam, Zach? 
Uh, no. Oh, yeah, so you also see I got my yellow spray foam uh, to make a dam so that the self-leveler doesn't pour out. You see, this is just the spray foam. It sets up really fast. Within about a half an hour, you can uh, pour on it. But uh, since this is going to be an eighth inch and a quarter inch thick, you need to stop it so it doesn't keep just run out into the floor. I also did that around my drain penetration too. So anything bigger, the caulking won't seal up. I put the foam. And uh, so yeah, let's get it mixed up. Okay, so it says to mix for two or three minutes. That's about what I did here. Okay, so I'm gonna start just pouring about the quantity that I know needed. You know, I have some marks. I got five sixteenths here, I have zero here. So I'm gonna kinda just pour it out where I feel like it's gonna need it the most and then start working it. Take my spike roller and just try to help it along here. Yeah, it's definitely got a lot more body to it compared to Customs Level Quick. Uh, because of those fibers that are in it, you really have to help it along. It would be a huge mistake to just pour this out and think it's going to find its level. It's definitely not. So I think I actually need to, in those corners, I think I need to spread it with my trowel. directions say that it's workable for about 10 minutes. You have about 10 minutes to help it seek its level before it, it's done moving around. So you kind of just want to break that surface tension. See that surface tension that's holding up right there? Definitely want to move it into all the corners. Just kind of move it around with the trowel.
Okay, so now that I have it spread around real good, I'm going to take the spike roller again and continue to go over it. I can feel my corner back down here is really thin. That's what I want. This is my high point, so I want that real thin. I can feel it getting thick down here. So I think this is pretty good. I mean, it's as good as good as it's gonna get. The rest is kind of left up to what the material really wants to do as it settles, but. That's about as much as I can just keep moving it around. All right, I had a lot of fun making this video with you. Hope it was helpful. If you need more help on your project, go to tilecoach.com. Over there, we have one-on-one -on -one coaching consultations you can book with me, or you can sign up for our team membership, which allows you access to our question and advice forums. Everything you need to learn how to tile, do your tile right, is at tilecoach.com. Again, I am blessed to be here with you. I love you. I love being your tile coach, and we'll see you on the next video.